Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to perform logging on your Golang services and to plug in logging using uh, middlewares. First we're going to uh, do uh, logging to uh, the standard output and then I'm going to show you how to use a log collector service such as Greylog uh, to collect um, and visualize um, the logs. So stay tuned. So let's start with the first scenario of logging to standard output. We're going to use this uh, quite popular library called Logrus. And our setup is pretty basic. We've got the Mux router. Uh, on top of the router, we register a couple of handlers, uh, one get handler and a post handler, which basically just echo to us uh, some information and the status code 200. Uh, so the idea is that we want to plug in a logging middleware so that it logs uh, every request that comes in. So uh, how is it done is basically we instantiate our middleware, we pass in the logger uh, reference to it and then we uh, register the middleware to our router okay, using the use function. In this case we actually pass the logging uh, function of the logging middleware uh, to the use function. And then we start the server. So let's take a look uh, more in depth uh, how we declare uh, the middleware itself. The middleware is declared under the middleware package in the logger.go file. If we take a look at the logger.go file, there we got the logging middleware, the constructor, and the logging function. And the logging function is the function that we actually register as middleware to our uh, router using the use function. But before taking a look at the logging function, let's take a look at the um, how we actually construct our logging middleware. So we've got struct in here, it's got the logger attribute, uh, the attribute is of type logger interface, and we have an interface here in front of the logging library to protect us just in case, uh, potentially in the future, if we want to switch the logging library, all the usages uh, of the library through the interface are going to remain the same and we just have to uh, switch, let's say, the library imp implementation. So we got the uh, constructor, which returns to us um, the logging middleware and is constructed, constructed using a uh, logger, which we get as a parameter. Uh, essentially, it happens uh, we are using this right here in the main. We work instantiating the logger's uh, logger, and then we pass it uh, as a parameter to uh, our constructor of the logging middleware. So after we got a constructed uh, middleware, which uh, knows uh, its reference to the logger, uh, then we can pass in this uh, logging. Uh, function to the uh, router. So what the logging function uh, essentially uh, represents is basically a handler function. The handler function gets a response writer and the request uh, itself and uh, it also gets as a parameter here the um, uh, this next um, parameter through which we can call uh, the actual endpoint uh, to be executed. Uh, so essentially we have the ability of executing code uh, before and after the endpoint is executed uh, using the next uh, parameter to execute the endpoint we call the serve HTTP uh, function passing in the response writer and the uh, request itself. And the idea is that we have the uh, ability to uh, call the logger before we call our endpoint or after uh, the endpoint has terminated uh, executing and performing whatever functionality. Uh, in my case, I am logging after the uh, endpoint has finished executing since I want to uh, log in additionally the uh, status code. 
okay? And I want to log in um, the status code with which the endpoint has finished uh, executing. I want to log whether it's 404, it's 500 or 200 or um, whatever it is actually. Um, that's why I have a little bit of a complex uh, setup in here uh, into which I will go in a second but just to show you how you can do it simpler if you want to log in before the execution of the endpoint uh, you can essentially copy this we won't need the uh, status code so we can remove it from here remove it from the format string we can comment this and comment our sort of interceptor into which I'll go later and essentially to the serve HTTP we just pass in the response writer and the request itself like so. So this is our setup if we just simply want to just uh, instantly uh, add the log line before even the endpoint has been uh, starting, starting to uh, perform its functionality. Uh, but in my case I actually want to log additionally the status code. So the idea here in order to be able to log the uh, status code is to have a wrapper on top of the response writer. In my case it's called response writer interceptor uh, because normally we don't have access to the status code uh, not via the basic response writer, not via the request itself. So uh, the trick in here is that we're wrapping the response writer uh, the struct in my case is called response writer interceptor it's essentially the response writer plus a status code okay it's declared in here response writer interceptor response writer and status code and essentially it has the same interface as the uh, response writer has all of the uh, methods of the response writer right header write hijack and flush and whenever we call uh, these uh, methods. Uh, furthermore, this response writer interceptor just calls its response writer um, to do the work. So when we call flush, it calls the response writer flush, and then when we call hijack, it calls its response writer hijack. There's a couple of type castings here. When we call write, it calls the response writer write. Uh, but the trick here is uh, when we write uh, the header. This is when, um, if we go to main.go, we see here writer, write header, status code 200. This is the place where we um, actually write our status code that we want to respond with. So the interceptor essentially intercepts uh, this call. It sets the status code uh, attribute in here and just furthermore calls upon uh, it's response writer to delegate uh, the setting of the status code. So essentially this is how we obtain uh, a copy of the status code within our uh, response writer interceptor. And then from our response writer interceptor, um, after the execution of the endpoint, we have access to the status code and we can uh, pass it to the infof function um, and actually perform um, the logging um, action. So let's take a look at how this uh, actually works in action. So first let's have the simple, let's take a look at the simple example of logging uh, before uh, calling the endpoint. So we got the info f function being called before serve HTTP. I'm going to set some breakpoints and use the debugger to show you exactly the order of execution. So I'm going to start debugging the uh, process and uh, I set a breakpoint here in the lemon handler because this is what uh, I want to trigger in here. So after my server has started, I'm going to call uh, perform a curl request to uh, localhost 8084 slash uh, lemon which uh, 
has triggered the middleware correctly first uh, before the endpoint. So first the uh, request is going to be logged uh, and then if I jump on the uh, next breakpoint essentially the endpoint now is getting called. We're writing the header and responding. And if I take a look at the output I see the logged line in here. Next let's take a look at the more advanced scenario of logging uh, after calling the endpoint. So we first uh, instantiate the response writer interceptor. We pass in the writer interceptor to um, calling of the endpoint. So instead of the uh, normal writer we want to call the endpoint with the uh, writer interceptor. And after that we would um, log the request additionally with the set uh, status code. So let's take a look at how that uh, would work. Let's start the debug process. Create the uh, curl request. So the response writer interceptor is being uh, instantiated. If we jump uh, the endpoint is being called, right header is being called, and if we jump into the right header we see that our response writer interceptor is being called instead of the um, usual uh, response writer. So our writer interceptor would set the status code correctly and call upon the uh, usual uh, response writer. After that the response is being written and if I jump to the next breakpoint I should see that the request is being logged using the uh, response writer's interceptor's uh, status code. And if I check within the writer interceptor the set status code has been set uh, successfully to status OK. So if we take a look um, at the output we see here that we got a GET request on the path for slash lemon and uh, the response was status code 200. So essentially confirming uh, that everything works. The second part of this tutorial has to do with uh, using log uh, collection services. Now if you're logging to the uh, standard output and you're using cloud platforms such as Google Cloud, uh, AWS, Azure, uh, they usually have a system to collect the uh, logs automatically from the terminal output so that you can filter them and visualize them later. Uh, they look like something like this. Uh, this is an example using uh, Google Cloud. So we'll get a console similar to this where you would sort of search for your service, microservice, and then sort of uh, visualize the logs from it. And since uh, the only thing that you need to do is just deploy your service within the uh, sort of Google Cloud environment, and from there it's going to, um, Google Cloud is automatically going to extract the logs and send them to these sort of uh, log visualization systems. So you don't have to do anything. I believe the same approach is followed by AWS and Azure. This is definitely one of the benefits of using uh, those uh, platforms. However, if you want to do it uh, on your own, uh, let's say you have a DigitalOcean server, um, you can do it as well. Um, a good solution for that uh, is the open source solution called uh, Gray Log. And this is what I'm going to show you in this second part uh, of this tutorial. So uh, you can follow. Uh, this link is going to be mentioned down in the description with the sort of quick start uh, of Gray Log using Docker. Okay, I would recommend uh, to start off by scrolling down to the um, Docker Compose uh, configuration, which I'm going to uh, use in this tutorial. Um, I'm using the Docker Compose example version 3. 
so in this Docker Compose, it essentially contains the gray log um, itself, plus its dependencies on Mongo and uh, Elasticsearch. Essentially, I just uh, copied and uh, pasted it into the Docker Compose that I have right here. The only uh, modification that uh, I did is uh, I added another sort of um, external port to Greylog, uh, which is uh, in my case port um, 5555. Um, that is going to be the port where I'm going to um, essentially push the logs uh, from my Golang application to Greylog. Okay, so that's going to be just a um, TCP socket open on port 5555. So let's take a look what uh, it tells us to do. Essentially, we have this Docker Compose. Once you've just copied and pasted it in here, you can declare also the uh, port beforehand so that you don't have to stop the Docker Compose, which I had to do, and restart it again. Once you have that, uh, you can actually start it with uh, Docker Compose up. And let's wait a second until everything starts. Meanwhile, we can take a look at what the uh, quick start tells us to do. Uh, so after this has uh, started, it will be available at the uh, port, which I believe is mentioned in here. Give me one second. Yes, it's HTTP port 9000. So the outputs in here have stabilized. I'm sort of assuming that it has started already. So I'm going to go to this URL. Usually uh, you would have to input Additionally, the uh, sort of username and password, admin, admin, in my case, uh, it has um, added it to cache or cookies and I'm basically logged in automatically. Next, what you'll have to do is to set, in order to set up this basic TCP socket that accepts logs, uh, is essentially to go to system inputs and add an input. In my case, let's see if I... Um, Okay, I have this input. Maybe I can delete it and recreate it again. So inputs, I'll have to select from here following the tutorial that we have to find the raw plain text TCP input. So let's find it. TCP launch new input. And we want to mark it as global in here to start on all nodes. I believe we just have one node. This is in case you have a more complex clustered uh, deployment of Greylog, I believe. Let's just call it TCP input and leave it at the basic settings. In here, you can enable TLS, change the port, bind address, and so on. So let's click Save. And essentially, this is our input uh, running successfully. After that, we can go to show received messages and click on this live play uh, button, which will essentially um, allow this page to be refreshed every second so that we see our logs uh, immediately showing up in this dashboard once we perform the uh, requests. So after that, we're essentially uh, done with uh, the uh, gray log part we can also uh, confirm that everything is working via sending uh, manually a message via netcat to localhost 5555 so let's see if that will yes and we got our first log message great now we know that we can connect uh, from Golang. So let's take a look at how we can do that in Go. So essentially, um, we want to keep uh, the same 
middleware except the um, logger uh, itself is going to be different it's not going to be logros uh, it's going to be um, a custom logger that I've defined under the log package called graylog in the graylog.go file so what I want to do is to comment out logros and uncomment my code for uh, graylog essentially what I'm uh, initializing a uh, TCP connection to localhost port 5555 and uh, I'm constructing uh, my uh, gray log logger uh, passing the connection to it and once I have the logger I pass the logger to the middleware and the, essentially the middleware remains the same except the uh, info f function instead of logging to um, standard output is going to send uh, the uh, string to Greylog over TCP. So let's take a look at how Greylog um, logger uh, is constructed. Essentially we have the struct, struct in here. It has a connection, um, net connection uh, as an attribute. We construct it in this way. And then when we call info f, essentially we call upon the uh, active connection, we call write, and essentially we uh, send in um, whatever um, calling the uh, fmt.sprintf to generate a string out of uh, the format, string format and arguments. And once we have the string, um, we have also to mention here the sort of um, line ending um, backslash n in order to end the sort of and flush the uh, TCP uh, message. And this is basically it. Um, let's take a look at how this would work. Um, I can also set a debug breakpoint in here just in case we want to confirm that everything is executed in the order that we would like. So our Docker Compose uh, is running actively. I'm going to start the uh, debug process and I'm going to uh, send a curl request to the same lemon, okay? So my response writer interceptor gets triggered, then the endpoint gets triggered, then our info f uh, function of the logger gets triggered, and now we should be able to see how the gray log logger itself is uh, called upon. And after that, the console is empty, but we should be able to uh, going into the gray log to see that we uh, got here the um, logged request, which is a get request on for slash lemon 200. And um, just for confirmation, we can log the other request, which is a post request on for slash potato. And we can also skip through this and let's take a look that our request is logged successfully. So that is it. Uh, thank you for staying with me and see you in the next tutorials.